Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to troubleshoot the top eight reasons why your washing machine shakes and moves. Stick around to the end of the video for an important washer safety tip that most people don't even know about. But before we begin, we're going to make sure the appliance is unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you turn off your hot and cold water supplies. The first thing we need to look at are the leveling legs. They're used to adjust the washer so it sits level. There are a few different styles of leveling legs. Most of them screw in and have a locking nut to hold them in place. They also have rubber feet to absorb vibrations. Some washers even have self-adjusting legs in the back. First thing you want to do is make sure the washer's level. So rock the machine back and forth and make sure it is. If it's not, then we have to tilt the machine back and inspect the leveling legs because they may just need adjustment. Once it's tilted back, first check the legs for any damage or missing rubber feet. Front load washer leveling legs tend to wear out quicker because of the weight of the machine. If any of the legs are damaged, you'll have to replace them. Keep in mind some leveling legs and feet are sold separately. Once you're sure they're in good condition, adjust them so the washer sits level on your floor. On the models with self-adjusting rear legs, you have to tilt the machine forward and make sure the feet drop down. Then, as you lower the rear of the machine, the legs should adjust to the level of the floor. If it's not level after that, you may have to tilt it back and adjust the front legs too. If you need to order a part, simply go to AppliancePartsPros.com and type in your model number. Find your part on the easy to read diagrams and match it to the number below. Click on the part if you want to see more pictures of the item or watch its repair video. You can also scroll down to see DIY stories from customers like you or ask a question in the Q&A section. Once you're ready, you can add the part to your cart. It's that easy. Most orders will arrive within two business days. The next things to check if your washer shakes and moves are the shock absorbers. They dampen the movement of the tub during the cycles. Shock absorbers are found on front load washers only. Depending upon the brand, there'll be three or four that support the tub. They compress and expand as the washer tub moves up and down. They're located at the bottom of the washer and are attached to the tub and the base. You can visually check the shocks and see if they're broken or leaking oil. If you don't see any physical damage, you may have to take the shock out to see if it's failed. To do this, compress it by hand. There should be some resistance. Then pull it out, and as the pressure increases inside, it will get more difficult. If it moves too easily and the two halves just separate, then it's failed and needs to be replaced. Now we need to look at the suspension rods and dampening straps. They control the vibrations and movement of the tub. Suspension rods act just like shock absorbers, but instead of riding on them, the tub hangs on them. They help control the movement of the tub during the cycles. If your washer also has dampening straps, they work with the suspension rods for added control. Suspension rods and dampening straps are only found on top load washers. The rods go from the upper cabinet frame to the bottom of the outer tub. And the dampening straps go from the upper cabinet to the tub cover. The rods can be tricky to test because a lot of times you can't visually tell that they're damaged unless the upper ball and socket are damaged. One way you can test it is to push down on the tub. This should give you one smooth bounce. But if you push down and it bangs around, more than likely the rods are bad. Another thing to look out for is that when you run it, even though the load is balanced, it easily goes out of balance in the spin cycle, causing the washer to shake and move. If you have a front load washer, the next thing to check is the spider support arm. It's what holds the inner tub in place. The spider support arm usually has three arms that attach to the inner tub and a shaft that goes out to the drive pulley or motor. As the pulley or motor turns, it spins the arm in the tub to agitate the clothes. It's located between the inner and outer tubs. If the washer is shaking and moving, it could be that the arm is going bad. If so, there are a few ways to check it. One of the first signs is that the washer is going out of balance during the spin cycle. If you spin the inner tub by hand, you might hear a clicking or rumbling noise as it goes around. That could be because parts of the spider support arm are broken and moving around inside. Pay attention to the gap between the inner and outer tubs as you spin it. They should always stay the same distance apart. If you notice it's wobbling as you turn it, one of the arms could be broken. Also make sure to check inside the door seal at the bottom. If you see any damage to the outer tub, it could be a sign that the spider arm is broken and the inner tub is bouncing around. If you determine that the spider support arm is damaged, you'll need to replace it. Now we're going to look at the springs. They help control the movement of the tub. There have been many types of springs used in washers over the years. No matter where they are inside, they all do the same thing. 
Front loaders have a large suspension spring on either side that supports the tub from above. Top loaders use a variety of different springs. Usually they're hooked into the washer base and attached to the tub frame. Visually inspect all the springs for rust or damage. If any of the springs are stretched out, the hook points are damaged, or they're broken, you'll have to replace them. As always guys, hit those like and subscribe buttons now to help support us making more of these videos. Another thing to check are the suspension pads. They allow the washer to move freely during the cycles. There are a few different styles of suspension pads, but they all do the same thing. Some are small plastic pads that the frame rides on. Others are a ring at the base of the machine. The smaller pads are located between the frame pieces, while the snubber ring is located underneath the whole assembly. They allow the suspension to move smoothly during the cycles. If your washer is shaking and moving, it could be that the pads or ring are worn out, causing the suspension to bind up so inspect them for damage and replace if necessary. Next thing to check is the balance ring. It's mounted on the inner tub to help control vibrations during the spin cycle. The balance ring has liquid in it to counterbalance the tub as it spins. On top loaders, they're mounted on the top of the inner tub. Front loaders that have them usually have two, one on either end of the inner tub. If your washer is shaking and moving, the balance ring could be damaged and dried out. On top loaders, it's easy to inspect. All you have to do is take off the tub cover and look to see if it's damaged. On front loaders, you can't visually inspect the rings because they're inside the outer tub. So if you've ruled out everything else, you may have to take the washer apart in order to inspect them. If you find that a ring is damaged, you'll have to replace it. Last thing to check are the tub bearings. They allow the drive shaft to rotate as the washer goes through the cycles. Washers usually use either a sleeve bearing or a ball bearing for the drive shaft to ride on. When sleeve bearings fail, they usually just start to squeal, so if your washer is shaking and moving, it's probably because you have ball bearings that have gone bad. On front loaders, the bearings are located at the rear of the outer tub, and on top loaders, they're at the bottom of the outer tub behind the motor. All bearings can fail due to age, or if the tub seal is leaking and water is getting into them, it can shorten their lives. If the bearings are starting to fail, you'll get a squeaking noise, and as they continue to fail, the noise and vibration will get worse. Usually the vibrations get worse during the spin cycle. To check if a bearing has failed, you can turn the inner tub manually and listen for any noise or feel if the bearings aren't turning smoothly. If your bearings have failed, you'll need to replace them, and it's also recommended that you change the tub seal at the same time. Now here's that safety tip we promised you earlier. Washing machine fill hose inspection is often overlooked by most people. If your fill hose burst, it can cause severe water damage to your home. A fill hose can flood your home with up to 500 gallons of water per hour, so it's important to inspect them regularly. Make sure to check the entire hose for any signs of bulging or leaking. Also make sure the fittings aren't corroded. Then shut off the water and look at the washers and screens inside. If they're clogged, you can just clean them out, but if they're rusted or damaged, you'll need to replace them. When you reinstall them or put new ones on, make sure the hose fittings on each end are tight so you don't get any leaks. There are many different types of hoses. The most common ones are rubber or braided stainless steel. Rubber is the most common type of hose, but if you want extra burst protection because of where the washer is installed, it's recommended that you upgrade to the stainless steel type. Some of the newer systems even have an auto shut off feature that shuts the water off if a leak or change in pressure is detected. Regardless of the hose type or the warranty it has, it's important to check them at least one to two times a year because they can fail at any time. Once you take care of the problem, you can plug the appliance in, turn the water back on, and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another troubleshooting video brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons now, and if you have any questions or want to share how your repair went, leave a comment down below.